We take upwards of a trillion photos every year. Uh, if, you, if you count all the photos that anyone in the world takes uh, over the co course of the year. Um, and that's, you know, that's a huge amount. Um, and so, you know, the question is, what do we do with all those photos? What do you do with a trillion photos? I'm Steve Seitz. I'm a professor at the University of uh, Washington. I've been here for about uh, 12 years. Uh, I also run a, a group at Google in uh, the Fremont Seattle lab, and we do 3D mapping. The answer is, is more or less we put them in a shoebox, just like our parents did in shoebox in the attic, although now it's uh, on your hard disk or in Facebook. and So pretty much you put these photos there, you upload them, and you almost never look at them again. Uh, so you know, really my, uh, what drives my research and my colleagues' work uh, is what can we do with all those photos to create 3D models of the world's people, places, and events from you know, a trillion photos. We take photos typically downloaded from the internet, uh, and these are photos that people uploaded to Flickr, vacation photos, and so forth. Uh, we match them together using uh, techniques that detect features in the different images and find features in common. Uh, and then based on those feature positions and different images, we uh, run algorithms that reconstruct 3D models uh, based on those matches. You know, the more pixels, the better, as far as we're concerned. Um, more both in terms of resolution as well as numbers of photos. Uh, so having one really, really high resolution photo only gets us that far, so far because we need different viewpoints in order to be able to compute 3D geometry uh, and cover all the surfaces of the object. So we typically try to download and access as many photos as possible at as high resolution as possible. But uh, we can still make use of you know, cell phone quality photos, which are actually getting better and better. Um, and uh, you know, there's challenges with cell phone photos. They tend to have you know, um, rolling shutter and other artifacts and things like that. But um, in general, the more pixels, the better. We've done a lot of work on uh, taking photos and creating street view-like uh, experiences out of them. So. Uh, Photosynth was one example um, where we did some work at the university and Microsoft uh, licensed it and, and built up this really cool uh, thing which allows you to upload your photos and create these magical 3D media experiences of, your, of the scene that you're looking at. Another example more recently is uh, I've been doing all this work with Google, uh, so we've built something called Photo Tours where we take all the photos that anyone has ever uploaded, um, at least publicly available, uh, for um, uh, places like Notre Dame or uh, you know Great Wall of China or any other famous tourist site and build a 3D model that you can then interact with on the map, on Google Maps. The work that we did at the university that led to Photosynth was done in collaboration with a researcher at Microsoft Research, uh, Rick Selisky, who heads the vision group there. And uh, there's a grad student, Noah Snavely, that we were both co-advising, who's now a professor at Cornell. Um, and, uh, and we did this research project and the results kept getting more and more exciting and um, Rick thought, you know, it'd be crazy not to try to develop this into a product at Microsoft and uh, he really made that happen. Um, uh, in the case of uh, Google, more recently, I've actually been, you know, I, I lead a product group at Google and so there's kind of a direct uh, mechanism for doing tech transfer. There's a project called MapsGL, which is uh, kind of the latest platform for maps on desktop. Uh, and it uses um, essentially 3D graphics as opposed to previous maps were all 2D. And we did a lot of the image rendering, you know, satellite imagery, street view, uh, user photos for that. Um, the, the other big thing that we've done recently is a feature called Photo Tours, which, um, which does it takes uh, you know, all the photos of a place on, on Picasso or Panoramia to public websites. Um, and the photos that people have uploaded uh, connects them all together automatically to build a 3D model and then creates essentially a 3D tour of that place, which will kind of fly you down you know, to the front of the Pantheon, you know, move between the key views, fly inside, look around at Raphael's tomb and the other highlights, um, and you have these really compelling 3D transitions. So at every time you're looking at a photo that someone uploaded, but we're transitioning from one photo to the next in a 3D way, that really gives you a sense of what the scene is like. So this image is a, is a rendering of part of the city of Rome, and um, 
uh, this was the, we created this um, algorithmically from lots and lots of photos, and uh, and um, so you see the Coliseum. Uh, most of the Coliseum is reconstructed here from users' photos that were uploaded to Flickr.com. Uh, so you know thousands of photos of the Coliseum from many different angles uh, were all matched together and uh, and used. We applied um, so-called structure for motion techniques to compute the camera pose. So if you uploaded a photo of the Coliseum to Flickr, well, we probably know where you were standing very accurately in the direction that you were, your camera is pointing. Uh, and then we apply stereo algorithms to get dense geometry. So that's what, what the source is of, of this, is, of this uh, reconstruction. Uh, more recently, we've also started using aerial imagery from planes uh, and cameras pointing in different directions. And so um, some of the ground and trees and so forth are reconstructed from the air. So in fact, um, I think we have a rendering, a synthetic rendering of a time lapse. Um, so actually the lighting is changing over time here. So it is essentially a time lapse. Um, so here we're, we're rendering changes in time uh, based on, um, you know, modeling the lighting in the scene, but you could also I could show you a time lapse of photos that people had taken over time and play them in order. You know, right now I think this looks pretty good, but I think five years now from now we'll look back on these results and think, wow, very, very crude. Um, so it, you know, it will look much closer to photorealistic. Um, I think uh, going forward we also want to model how scenes change over time. So these scenes are essentially static. Uh, they're also full of holes. We would like to be able to fill in, you know, the backsides of, of objects that weren't visible from the image. Um, and uh, I also think we'll have more sophisticated techniques for modeling not just places, but people like humans um, and events and, and other, other things of interest to humans. I think people will never stop taking pictures until there's maybe some new technology which is even cooler, uh, holograms or whatever. Um, but I, I think most pictures are of your friends and family in front of something really interesting. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, the world is constantly updating, so we will never have captured the world and be done with it. Uh, so I think there will always be a need to take more photos.